Hi everybody, my name is Katie. Welcome to part 13 of the Creating Christmas Island series. I'm really excited today to start the Santa's Toy Workshop area. This is actually going to be part one of the workshop as part two will happen once we have access to the toys that come with Toy Day later in December. Let's go take a look. I've been really excited for the chance to build the toy workshop ever since I decided to do a North Pole themed island. And as I was looking at the space and going through, I realized there was a lot of structure that was gonna have to be put together. And I've done a few perspective builds before, and I decided that this was a really good opportunity. I put the museum in the back of the area and decided to make it look instead of being a museum, as if it were the extension of the toy workshop. So the entire area I'm standing in, both in front of the path and behind the path, and everything then behind it would be the big giant workshop. Of course, it would be huge with all of the elves working all day long to make the toys for everybody. So the museum is still there and I can get in and out of the entrance, but I start covering it up. So I'm using these are climbing walls that are turned around backwards and I'm kind of tucking them in behind the cliff. Part of the reason I do that is because they are really tall. So I didn't wanna put them all the way up on the very back cliff and, and kind of layer the design. So I've put together three really important pieces of this perspective build, the cliffs, the drinking machines, the drink machines are at the bottom. And then these are really important. This is the box sofa. I know that sounds strange, but if you use the black and I put the corner on there and then the straight pieces and you turn them around, they give me this really good lip, this border, an edge that is actually pretty straight. And for me, it does a good job of framing off the fact that this is more of a building. And then down here, I decide to go back and forth, red, green, red, green, and I'm turning the drink machines around. This added a lot of color and a, a lot of structure, and the look of a wall to the space that I'm working in and didn't require the use of custom patterns. So I thought about filling the whole area with the simple panel like I have at the front, but the custom patterns take a long time to load into the game and I wanted more texture to it. So this is the, the spinning, the game wheel I've turned around and I'm coming down, I've, I've put the organ out. I look back, I stand, how does it look? I put a couple more things down, I go back down the cliff, I look up again and, and see how does it look. And this is how perspective builds work. You end up doing a lot of putting a few things down, imagining how it's going to look, and then going back out to the space and tilting up. Any perspective build usually has a, a tilt up function so that you can really see what the whole thing looks like. And again, I'm trying to make the space look as if it is a, a workshop. So there are a few of the items in the game that do the puff of smoke that comes up out of the top. And that works really well for creating the illusion of an exhaust fan or a smoke fan. Like there are machines hard at work in the factory that you can't see that are back behind. Once I put everything in place, I decide that the snow is just too white. I can see too much of it. So I create a custom pattern really quick that's just straight black. There's nothing else to it. Just the color black. And I set it down. I might go back later and adjust the pattern a little bit, but I'm not sure that that's going to be necessary. For now, just the straight color down all over the space makes the illusion of the a roof. So again, I'll probably touch it up later, but for now it's in place and it really helps uh, frame out this entire building, this factory style building. So for me, it was a really important step in the process to putting things down in place. If you're not familiar with the custom pattern software and you don't have the upgrade, you really just need the very basic level. You don't have to have it upgraded to the pro creator. Just the basic level will put down a straight pattern that can be really useful when you're doing a lot of building structures. 
So here you can see I'm back down again, tilting. What can I see? What can't I? These are the ice pillars. I'm not using a lot of the ice items throughout this part of the island, but here and there I found that they looked really beautiful at night because they glow. They're all got this effervescent sort of feel to them that's wonderful. I've decided everything that's here at the building is in the right place, so I'm putting down a floor. This is a blanket pattern. It has, you can see as I pull the screen up, it has a left, right, and middle. I really like the way that it tiles together, and I've used it before with different color patterns, but I'm just using the middle at this point to put down in kind of that red-green. I like it. I like the way the circle puts in place. It kind of has a texture of carpet. But as I'm putting it down, I realize it actually clashes a little bit with the drink machines. So originally it was designed to coordinate with the imperial fence. And you can see that right now that the reds, the tone of the reds matches the imperial fence. But I really want it to bring the area together. So after I get the pattern down in place, I do stop and change the color a little bit. And you'll see me do that in a second. I decided not to add it to edit that out of the video. Usually I would. Usually I would edit moments out where I stop and change a pattern. But I leave it in place because I wanted you guys to see the moment where I go from one color scheme and I change it just a tiny bit so that it has tones from both the Imperial Fence and the drink machine. And the combination helps really pull the area together quite a bit. So I leave it in place, even though I wouldn't usually. So you can see here, I'm swapping that pattern out so I don't lose it. And I'm adjusting a little bit, tiny movements here and there to bring out a little bit more of that cherry red tone. And so then you'll see the difference that it makes. It's not all the way one direction. It's not where it started. It's somewhere in the middle so that the area comes together. Here I'm putting down, this is the iron bench work table. And as I put it down in place, I'm kind of getting a gauge for how the space will come together. And it was about this time I realized I was not gonna be able to finish this build for a little while. I know that there are a lot of toys coming in the new update and I won't go into what else is coming because I don't wanna spoil it, but I want them and I want them in the workshop. And so this build is really going to be two parts. This first part here is the structure. It's as I'm putting the building together and I'm creating almost the space, like a room that's going to be decorated. But part two of this video, I have no idea when that's coming. We don't know when Nintendo is going to unlock the Christmas toys for us. And I might be able to get a hold of some of those in advance. But for now, I'm not sure when to tell you to expect part two. So we'll just have to wait and see what Nintendo decides to do. You can see I'm just finishing the carpet on the other side of the path. This is gonna all be part of one big area. And there'll be a sewing station and a wrapping station many different elements of de design and creativity with the little elves working like crazy. And I'm excited to get the toys in place and really finish it off. Let's take a quick tour of what it looks like before we fill it with the toys. So here you can see I'm using the same pattern that I used on the cushions for wrapping paper on these simple panels in the front. And as you tilt back, you can see a little bit of that skyline. You can see the, the look as if it is a factory. And I really like the way that the windmill spins. It gives me the illusion that there are things moving and that gives me the feeling that there is work going on. I think you can get a good feel as to how this place is going to come together when we're ready. Just tilting it up again, you can see the, the line, right? We're looking for that really intricate skyline from this area. And I'm really happy with the way that it came out. I can't wait to show you guys part two. Until then, I hope you found something useful here and that you continue creating in this game. Until next time, have the best Animal Crossing day.